Uh, yeah, let me start with uh, uh, saying that I'm really glad to be in front of anthropologists. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, uh, from at least from what I read about anthropologists in the uh, UK, that is the, uh, that is the, uh, uh, I've been so much talking today in Latvian that it's <coughs> hard ways to translate to English because usually it's the way around. Well, anyway. Uh, anthropo anthropologist uh, being uh, being the the branch of the science or the uh, or the uh, or the uh, type of people, at least in UK, that uh, that actually spread across all varieties of uh, of uh, society and organizations and and the uh, and domains of activity. Meaning that anthropologists usually, when they finish their degrees, they end up working either for UNESCO or for World Bank or for bank or for the government or for the universities, they are actually everywhere. That was number one uh, sort of people spreading, donating, uh, donating, uh, uh, donating uh, 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 group of, uh, of, of science uh, as we can imagine. And the same, uh, uh, what I know uh, from the studies uh, I've read about the anthropologists uh, in, 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 in US, it's probably the bastion of the, of the uh, qualitative research. And I could you know, I could get that sense from the prior, previous uh, speaker where we sort of have this sort of sentiment and then with it, you know, that's what matters. Well, anyways, uh, uh, yes, and thank you for the introduction. I usually tend to tend to omit that political science degree when I introduce myself. I say that uh, I'm bachelor by engineering. I have a, a master's in, in, in uh, public administration and, 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 uh, and PhD in uh, SMP policy, and I dropped that University of Latvia degree, which is political science, but I started as communication student and I finished my program as, a, as political scientist, and that all kinds of things happened in, in, in between, which does not really allow me to say that I've actually studied everything in all political science. Scientists should have studied. I studied quite a bit of what normal communication scientists should have studied, and then I got the the political science degree awarded, so I admit it. And also, not to say that I kind of, when you, when you see this long list of your educations, you feel sometimes like an Indian or, or a student who has piled a uh, uh, large number, number of, uh, of uh, programs that they've been through while they were seeking for their perfect position in the life. But why this long introduction is not that much about me, but also about the education, the quality of education. Why I've been pursuing all those degrees, uh, because I've been seeking for knowledge, and knowledge that it would inform me uh, to do what is really my passion, which is uh, public, uh, public policy and public administration. Uh, I uh, worked for the central government for a year. Before I started my PhD studies, uh, actually masters, the second master studies, and before then, I, I, I worked for uh, for the youth sector. I was um, actually uh, in charge of youth policy in Latvia in uh, once upon a time. So, and though that work at that point gave me clear sense that I need knowledge and I need understanding how that society works. That with my engineering degree, I can understand how systems work perfectly well. Where there's you know. There's input, there's output, and something happens in the middle, and you know, you get the general logic, but then you need a knowledge. So, but zip it, I'm not saying word more. Um, I want to start with uh, innovation systems line. Uh, and the, the reason why, even though you aren't anthropologists and you probably don't want to uh, hear anything about the innovation system, but I, need, I needed to frame, uh, frame uh, the conversation and also to at least try to outline and explain you how we think about the world. And uh, us uh, in this, you know, let me think how to say it widely. I would love to say that, you know, in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm talking as a, as a representative of ministry. But no, I'm talking as, I, I am, I'm talking as myself. That's the job I'm doing, right? So I, I stand here before the ministry. I do not stand here for the, for the scholar and, and, and thinker or anything else. That's aside, and I'm, I'm happy to discuss more theoretical things, uh, things, things later on if anybody is interested. But here is the, the way we think. 
And we also introduced this thinking in Latvian public, uh, public, uh, public policy. No one ever before we started doing this uh, was, uh, has, uh, has drawn a picture of Latvian innovation system, which is nothing wrong with that. Uh, we can live without innovation system, whether it's drawn or not, but it, the wrong thing is we cannot ask right questions and we cannot provide right solutions. And why we thought uh, this way of looking at things is important, because we break one of the, uh, one of the sort of uh, ways of thinking about the knowledge, knowledge production, knowledge consumption, knowledge utilization, and all that kind of thing. We, we break down or sort of put away this notion that knowledge is produced somewhere, let's say here, in the university. Then it is used somewhere out there. Uh, by somebody, and all you need is actually somebody who sort of transfers that knowledge, runs between the two, and helps them both sides to meet and understand. No, that's, that's not what it is all about. We all function in a system, we all produce knowledge, we all work with it. Some of it is tacit, some of it is explicit, some is published, some is in under our, our fingers. It's, it's, it's all there. What matters is that we all work together for the aim that we know where we go. And uh, our work at the, at the ministry and the policymaker side is actually provide coherent uh, uh, mechanisms that allow the system function to the, to the, to the, um, to the, to the, to, to the same direction. So therefore, we put uh, three systems uh, uh, at the core of our uh, innovation system, that is political system, that is all our cabinet ministries, policies that we produce, and so on, including the smart specialization that we was referring to. Then we put the industry system, uh, and then we sort of put the, at the center of it all, we put the system of education and system of science. And we, on purpose, we put the science and education together, and on purpose, if I can sort of make it, make it uh, uh, dynamic, I would try to merge these, and I would try to merge these, because that whole thing evolves and works together. Then at the bottom, we put all, all the infrastructure, which includes not only the houses, the research equipment that we work on, but it includes also the information that is available to us, the capital, the banks, the, uh, all our uh, R&D uh, support instruments, also the research grants for all here, the infrastructure, and so on, and also standards and requirements. And today in the presentation, I want to touch upon three elements of the whole thing. One is the smart specialization that colleague already picked out, and I'm so glad to hear that people actually have noticed it. <laughs> um, I know it's it's not uh, not by choice, but by necessity. Understand all that. Uh, I want to touch upon a little bit about uh, uh, to about uh, talk a little bit about the higher education and, and, and research and a little bit about the requirements and, and incentives. So, uh, the, yeah, thank you very much. I just already don't have to <laughs> introduce, but uh, here's, the, here's our policy framework and the way how we plan our, uh, most of our, I wouldn't say all of our investments, but most of our, our investments in higher education and science and that is through the framework of a sustainable growth strategy or smart specialization. And indeed, the, the, the aim of this, of this, uh, of this uh, policy uh, is to boost uh, our economic performance and also to make us more productive as the economy. And being more and more productive, one interesting thing here in the discussion is sort of people don't go beyond saying more productive. So it's stopped there. It means, you know, I have to produce more papers. I have to write more, right? Or I have to clean more, or I have to cut more, more trees down. That, that what is important here, though, is that it actually means that it's more uh, technology-intensive economy. That is, there is more 
the same knowledge what you what you mentioned and, and, and which is sometimes it sounds abstract but then uh, then uh, you know if you sort of think about really think about it and probably also from an anthropological perspective with your methods there is a lot what to say about it and what to look at so um, probably that much for the for the objective, but then for the direction, and just to give a flavor of why those three three uh, three directions are here. In our economy, uh, as in any other economy on the world, in the world you can uh, divide what's the, what type of economic activity and firms are out there. You can divide them in uh, traditional sectors, sectors with high added value, and 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 and. Um, uh, with a uh, uh, large horizontal impact. So in all of those sectors for our economy, some change and, 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 and sort of and higher added value would help if we want really to be more productive and more, uh, more efficient and more effective and, and, and you know, to perform better. So therefore, the priorities is to focus our effort on high added value products make our innovation system to work better, be more energy efficient, which is all sort of normal things, have modern ICP all across the field, and very important, have modern education and uh, knowledge base, and also post-centered development. The modern education and knowledge base is actually where your growth comes in. Without the work that you are doing, modern education is impossible. That's what I think it's fact. The question is how we think about it, how we how we how we communicate it, how we understand it. When we talk about modern education, why we wanna, you know, it says not much, but then it allows us that word modern when we frame the policies as an next step, the policies that go here for this higher added value, that modern education allows us to focus and ask the question, what is modern education that allows us to do this? That allows us to achieve those goals and what do we need for it? What type of a person has to come out of the education uh, uh, institution at any level? So for that matter, such word is, is sitting here. As for the knowledge base, that is a knowledge base that is necessary to actually do any uh, changes and introduce any changes in the system. So what is that knowledge that people produce, tacit, implicit, explicit, whatever is there that allows us to achieve this? We'll not go into the, uh, uh, to the uh, specialization areas, just touch a little bit upon the power center development. Here in Latvia, when we talk about central development, we tend to think in terms of Riga, uh, outside of the Riga. But we can look also broader. When we look at the Europe, we are actually at the periphery of Europe. How we, being at the periphery of Europe, can play at the same level as everybody else, and what, have we, what, what do we do have to do for that? So again, anybody's work contributing to understanding that is important. Okay, this is a slide, we call it chocolate slide sometimes because you know there are parts. But um, this is the, those are all uh, policy instruments uh, that we have at hand that we've, uh, uh, we've designed or are designing to achieve this. So those policy instruments are uh, instruments that, that are aimed at uh, producing the change uh, within the education system, and those are instruments that are aimed at producing the change within, uh, within uh, our research system. The rest is related more to, more, more, uh, uh, more to uh, businesses, and uh, everything that happens outside of the uh, outside of the university walls. So, higher education. 
how we see uh, where we are going, what we are doing, and what we have to do. So for us, quality and relevance are, are two words that are important. And relevance comes from the education being relevant to those aims that we, we have put out for ourselves, uh, in this case in economic terms, but we can put those aims in any other terms that are for us as for society uh, relevant and important and valued. So that's where the value actually comes in and should come in. And I would say that's where also the role of the social sciences is to help society, to help us in public sector to bring out that value and actually to show what that value is, to communicate about it, to sort of make it explicit and heard. So anyways, quality and relevance. Uh, when we look at the higher education, we look uh, uh, at four building blocks of okay. it. First building block is resources, all physical, and uh, including infrastructure, including equipment, I including the all material that you are working, uh, using for your uh, coursework. Also the uh, environment, also how the uh, resources are that we have are, are, are used uh, uh, by students and research and probably industries. We look at the second building block, which is students. And here, uh, what interests us is, of course, accessibility. And it is also our cause, probably, to lesser, uh, lesser uh, intensity as it is students' cause, which I think is natural. Uh, in our case, priority is STEM. And I, uh, I, will, I can a little bit elaborate later on why. Um, then, in our, for us, uh, it is important to involve professional associations in the work uh, and organizations in the work with the students as early as we can. Then for us, when we think about, this, uh, about the students, it is to generate such programs that actually uh, provide a young person with all those uh, uh, capabilities and networks that make them uh, really sort of a, a, a very sort of successful uh, part of the, the whole way of life and living today in 2016 and from now on. And of course, we talk here also about the integration of education and research by what we mean when we say that and when we program our programs, we want to see students being employed in a research team. We want to be we want to be seeing students doing also research for the uh, different uh, organizations on so outside of the university, those being either industry organizations or local governments, or in our case, and I'll touch on in the next slide on that, also in different type of artistic uh, projects. When we talk about the academic stuff, we talk about the new home promo and promotion of talent. It's not a surprise that in our case there is a lot of uh, generation uh, issues uh, in, 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 in our academic personnel and there are many reasons why we do have older generation and gap of the, let's say, 50 to 35 year olds and then sort of a, a promising younger generation coming in. So uh, under this incentive part, also I didn't say anything about this, uh, and here is the incentives, that is the first building block in the, in the quality of education. So what rules of the game are worked in, in the, in the, in the uh, all programs that we are putting out, and in all your internal procedures that happen in the higher education institution, including those procedures the polygrapher when, 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 and polygrapher when, when a researcher gets uh, evaluated. Those rules of the game matter and uh, are a very, very important part of the, of the whole uh, thing. So 
here's how we look at the at the performance uh, 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 element in the funding and uh, why we think no, probably why side I will put aside that's scholarly this discussion that's that's for you. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in public sector, we, we, we take it because it is, for us, it's a useful tool. So we've designed a new funding uh, uh, system which essentially uh, takes the old system and merges it uh, where it has to be merged and it complements it with new elements. So first of all, our first pillar is the basic funding and that's where we merge of uh, study funding with the research funding, which essentially uh, we look at the basic funding for research together with the basic funding for study. And that, that's where we not only look, we also know with our formulas we have uh, merged together. With that, we incentivize the, uh, we, we incentivize the uh, management of universities to look at the uh, work that universities do with different eyes, we want them, and we hope they will do so, uh, to look at this as inseparable uh, uh, two things that a uh, university does. So a university personnel performs both research and teaching. Seems like no brainer, right? But then at the same time, yes? Five minutes. Okay. At the same time, it's, in, it's not always the case. So the, the, the second, um, second pillar is the uh, performance uh, pillar. Uh, and here, those research institutions, oh, sorry, and uh, higher education institutions, higher education institutions that perform better on certain criteria, those get the extra funding. And I'll open in my remaining five minutes that. So, and then there's developmental uh, uh, funding. So, things what we picked up, this is not important, this is important, right? It is important because we measure funding, how much, uh, uh, how much external research funding from different sources the institution brings in, and those different sources being government, uh, industry, local governments, and uh, international sources. Then we look how much there is a, uh, the institution works with young scientists, and we look how much institution involves its students in the research, but not only in research, but also in creative and artistic projects, because we think it's important. So, in the same sort of line of uh, putting out standards and requirements, we also define core rules of the game for ourselves when we do uh, implement our reforms. We've defined what type of knowledge base we uh, seek uh, to, to promote. We've defined what type of human capital we uh, seek to promote with our, uh, with our programs what type of institutions we seek to build, what type of infrastructure we seek to build. We'll not go in detail, there is a lot, uh, a lot in it, but those all things are thought carefully through to bring us up uh, in, uh, in the value, uh, added value terms. And probably, I will, how many minutes? Two? One? About two. Yes. About two, okay. Uh, but define also core responsibilities and tasks for higher education institutions. Knowledge base, innovation capacity of firms, which is a new uh, business for them. Usually they say those firms are out there, they don't innovate, they don't ask us, uh, they don't commission us to do research. We say it's your fault. You produce students that do not come back to you. You produce students that are not able to innovate. You produce the students that don't know what the global value chains are, right? Uh, generating s and human capital, a person with their knowledge and networks. That 
person, we want them to be multiple embedded. So to have work where they are studying and know what those global, global value chains are and have friends around the world. And also, we want university to be a resource hub where resources from all kinds of sources come together. And my last thing, in my last minute, and there is uh, requirements and <laughs> standards for anthropology. Those are those are those are those ones I invented just before coming here. So, uh, and those are meant just uh, just to for to promote the discussion. The way I would think about, uh, and, and, and when I look at the anthropology and uh, anthropologists, the same as any other uh, uh, discipline, is to be source of knowledge, to be source of science, technology, and innovation, human capital, to be, to provide modern education. Which of those uh, missions or goals or, or roles suit every single person at the personal level, that's personal choice, right? Uh, but the knowledge is out there. We all contribute, and this is map, global knowledge map of the Know of all articles that have been pr produced, I'm not, I won't be able to say whether it's 2011, 12, 13, 15, but that's according, all according to Raffles and, and Lederstorff. This is the same thing, uh, only those are Latvian publications, so we also publish. Yeah, and that's not important. Okay, thank you. <laughs>